Hey guys, welcome to our Awkward Travel Chats episode two. The votes are in. Today you wanted us to talk about our trip to French Polynesia, which we took in February of 2020. It was our last trip we took before the COVID-19 crisis. And because it was such an awesome trip, we we're gonna put it into two parts. Today we're gonna be talking about Morea, and next time we'll be talking about Bora Bora. I'm Kelly from The Awkward Tourist, and this is my husband, Kevin. He's from Kevin Lacey Photo. He is my photographer extraordinaire, so if you're not mm -hmm. following him, make sure you head over to at Kevin Lacey Photo on Instagram. Oh, what a shameless little promotion. Thank you so much. Um, a little bit about why we want to do these videos. Um, it's not safe to travel right now, so for our own sanity, since we travel a lot and that's what we really do, um, and what we really enjoy, we wanted to talk about some of our past travels and give you some tips um, and, you know, some stories. So if you do a plan a trip in the future, um, you'll be able to reference that. So. Yes, hopefully we'll give you lots of good information so you will be ready for your trip to French Polynesia, which if you want to go, you should definitely do it. It's definitely worth it. Yeah, it was an incredible trip. Super, yes. super fun. We went during the rainy season. Um, which I've heard can be pretty rainy, but we didn't really have much issue with the weather. It was very hot and humid, um, and a lot of the resorts were pretty empty. So that was two things that we encountered, but... Yes, um, we went in February, like I said. So January, February, March is generally the rainy season, aka the low season. So you're going to get... Um, it, there's not going to be as many crowds, which is really nice, but it was super humid. It was very, very hot and humid, and at some points you can get quite a bit of rain, I guess, but we had really, really good luck with the rain, so it's just kind of a trade-off. If you want less crowds, you'll have to maybe compromise yeah. a little bit on the weather, but it was, aside from a couple of days where it was very hot in the middle of the day, it was, we were great. Yeah. We had a great time. So getting to Morea, we first flew to the International Airport in Tahiti, which was an eight-hour flight from Los Angeles? About eight hours from yep. L.A. Um, we flew on Air Tahiti Nui, but Air France also has a flight, and you can also fly from San Francisco. Um, United has a flight, too. I think maybe they do, like, once a week or something like that. Um, I don't know how the schedules are different now with what's going on in the travel industry, but yeah. keep an eye on that for the future. And uh, to get to Morea, you can fly... Um, the inter-island airline is called Air Tahiti, not to be confused with Air Tahiti Nui. Those are two different ones. Air Tahiti just flies um, small planes in between the islands. Mm -hmm. And it's really close. I mean, you can see pretty much every day you can see the island of Tahiti from Morea. It's not very far. I don't yeah. know exactly the mileage, but we it's went... It's like 17 miles. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not super far. Uh, we went the route of the ferry instead of taking the flight over. Um, it was significantly cheaper. Um, it was a little probably more difficult to coordinate that, but um, it was it was the option that we went for. And I think it took like a half hour. Yeah, it was a half tops. hour, 45 minutes, and it was a lot cheaper. You can fly to Morea and it's like a two minute flight or something. It's yeah, crazy. It's super, super quick. But we opted for the Aramiti Ferry. I think there are two different ones. Yeah. I don't remember the name of the second one, but it was like $11 a person versus like $450 to fly. It was yeah. crazy expensive to fly. So you know, it was just a little bit more difficult getting to the ferry because you had to um, land in the, air at the international airport, get your bags, take a taxi to the ferry terminal, which was about $20. It was kind of a little bit pricey. And then, um, you know, coordinate the ferry schedule and... Yeah. And we took an overnight flight too. So we were doing this all at five or six in the morning yeah, when we, we landed with no sleep. sleep. So that was a little difficult as well, but I think it was worth it in the long run. Um, super nice ferry. And then on the other side, you can take a taxi on the island of Morea you can, or you can get a bus as far as public transportation goes. Um, taxis were pretty expensive. We didn't really look into that option unless we really needed to. Um, yeah. However, the bus is really not, <laughs> it's on island time. Yeah. So it wasn't really on a really great schedule. It was nice when we landed, when, um, the ferry yeah, came when in. we got, when the ferry, look, when the ferry came in, 
all the buses were waiting there, so you didn't really have to coordinate the schedule with that. So you just got on the, the bus from the ferry and you told them basically where you wanted to go. They would just stop at whatever hotels you needed yep. to stop at. And uh, you pay per person and per piece of luggage. So it ended up being, I think, like 10 US dollars total for, yeah. for the both of us and two big, do we have two big? Two big bags. Yeah. Two big bags. Yeah. I think it was like three, um, it's French Pacific francs is their currency. So mm -hmm. it was like 300 French Pacific francs a person and then 200 per bag. Yep. That's like about ish, $10. So it was, it was good. They dropped us off right at our um, hotel, which the first night we stayed at the Hotel Caveca. Uh, we were only going to stay there for one night, but we found it on... Hotels.com or Booking.com yeah. or we, some one of those hotel sites. If you're not super familiar with the way we travel, Kelly's the flight attendant. We always fly standby. So it's really difficult on that first night to figure out where you're going to stay. Um, because if the flight's full, we're not going that day. We might go the next day, you know, or so we don't really know what time we're going to be getting in. So we usually don't book a hotel that first night. Um, so we just booked whatever we could find at five in the morning when we didn't have any sleep and very little coffee in our systems. But... Um, yeah, we kind of just wing it for the first night usually. Yeah, and most of the touristy resorts and um, I think main accommodation is on the north side of the island. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to be taking that bus, make sure you go in the right direction. Well, the sofa tell was on the... Yeah, that's true. But it, on the south West side, side of the <laughs> island, there really isn't a lot of development. Um, there might be a few smaller hotels, but if you want like the overwater bungalow, those are going to be... Kind of more on the north side of the island pretty much yeah going to Morea is was really really good if you want to keep the trip more budget because not only was it cheap to get there from tahiti uh there are a lot of options in terms of hotels and lots of airbnbs so you can go really budget with airbnbs and get a kitchen to save money on food or you can go ultra luxe we stayed at the, the hilton which was um it was our honeymoon so we splurged on that but uh, you can do it really, um, really budget, which is nice if you, you have that option. And Kaveka was, uh, I don't, it wasn't super budget, but it wasn't super expensive. I think we paid like 120 Yeah, something like that. So, eh, it was, it was okay. But the, the hotel was nice. All the rooms were little, um, little separate bungalows and had a cute little overwater um, restaurant. Yeah, it was like on a dock and at the very end of the dock it was past the reef and you could go swimming there and so we jumped off that dock quite a bit. Yeah, it was on Cook's Bay. Um, yep. I don't know, if you look at a map of Morea, there's two bays. We were on Cook's Bay for the first night. Yeah. And Morea is definitely the island that has a lot more kind of jungly activity to do um, out of kind of those major Tahitian islands, Morea, Bora Bora, Tahiti. Um, so that was something that we had on our radar a little later. Originally, we just wanted to do this trip and just go to Bora Bora, but we kind of decided since we were going that far that we should split it up onto a couple different islands. And I'm really happy that we did Morea because it was a much more relaxed vibe. It was still very expensive and very, you know, resort prices were kind of crazy, um, but it was really beautiful and it was a big contrast from Bora Bora to Morea, which was a delightful surprise. I didn't really think that that was going to be that yeah, much different. Yeah, we didn't think it was going to be that different. Our first night was great. Uh, we ended up taking a... Oh, let's talk about that pizza place. Yeah. What was that pizza place Alo, called? Alo Pizza, A-L-L-O. Yes, that was yeah. walking distance from Hotel Caveca. In Cook's on, Bay. Uh, yeah, Cook's Bay. In the little town of Pow Pow. <laughs> I don't think that's how I don't think that's how you say it, but no, that's totally how you say it. Um, yeah, it was it, it was really good. It was like this little counter. You just sat um, yeah. at like a bar and it had a couple plastic tables and stuff. And yeah. I had heard, seen it on um, a few travel sites that recommended it, and it was less expensive than the restaurant at yeah. the hotel. We're talking quite a bit about budget here, so I'm just going to elaborate on that a little bit. French Polynesia is a very expensive place to travel. Um, generally you're going to pay, you know, 30 bucks a person at any, every meal that you're going to eat on the low end. Oh, at least. You yeah. know, so it, we supplemented that a couple ways. We brought some snacks and some different things from home that we could kind of make 
some little lunches and things like that here and there. But if you eat outside of the hotels or the resorts, it's significantly cheaper. It's still pretty expensive comparatively, um, but that is a great way to save some money. So we found this Allo Pizza place. Yeah, you can do it budget. It's harder yeah. and it might be not as quite as budget as, you know, Southeast Asia or someplace like that. But you can do it for less than we paid. But we kind of did a combination of splurging and budget. Yeah. Yeah. So we saved up a ton of credit card points too. We knew this was going to be kind of a bigger trip, but it was super worth it. It's just one of those kind of once in a lifetime destinations. So we were okay to spend a little more money on it this time around. Yeah. The second day we took a taxi to uh, the Hilton Marea just because it was easier. Like we, yeah, the bus, bus schedule, the bus was... schedule was very much on island time. And yeah. the person told us like, yeah, it's going to come when the ferry comes, but you know, sometimes <laughs> they don't even come then. And so, yeah. But... So we risked, you know, a few dollars instead of standing outside with our bags for yeah. <laughs> however long. Um, so we went to the Marea, the Hilton Marea and we checked in. And I talk about this a lot in the YouTube videos that we did and um, blog posts, but I am a Hilton Gold status um, due to the credit card that I have, which is really, really awesome. If you ever stay in Hilton's or are ever interested in that, I would definitely recommend it. it, especially just for the free breakfast. Like that is the best part, just because the breakfast at the Hilton Marea, and then we ended up staying at a Hilton property in Bora Bora, was going to be, I think the Hilton Marea was like 40 bucks a person per day. So it saved us like eighty dollars a day for three yeah, days. Yeah, so. even if you, <laughs> even if you just get this card for this trip, it's super worth it because we got all of our breakfasts for free. Which I think the breakfasts are the best meal of any that they really serve at the resorts because um, they're usually huge buffets and they're yeah super yeah. tasty. And it was free, so probably felt yeah better. that made it good too. But we saved like seven or nine hundred dollars on the whole trip just yes. from this one card, which really offsets that $95 fee for the year. So, I mean, it, it's it's kind of a no-brainer to get that card. It's no mean of promotion or anything, but that was huge for us on this trip. Yes. Um, we ended up staying in a garden bungalow at the Hilton Marea, which we didn't stay. We were hoping for an upgrade, but we didn't get one at the Hilton, but it was still really nice. Yeah. Obviously, you want to stay in an overwater bungalow, but um, uh, do you know how a, much? It was a lot more Yeah, expensive. I don't know how much they cost. Do you remember? It was like... At least seven hundred bucks a yeah, night. Yeah, so that was in the low season. It was for... pretty pretty expensive. So seven hundred bucks a night just wasn't gonna really happen on this one, unfortunately. But the garden bungalow was much more affordable, and we used the points. So I can't yeah. remember what we paid for that, but I don't remember it. Yeah, it still ended up being we used points and cash, and uh, the garden bungalows all have private plunge pools, which is really cool. Yeah. So we had our own little private pool. If we couldn't jump in the ocean, that made up for it a yeah. little bit. Yeah, and the resort had a great big pool as well, in addition to it, the little plunge pool that was in your room. And that was a beautiful temperature, and it was super nice. It had its own private beach um, with just amazing snorkeling right off the edge. You could also rent snorkel gear for free. They had super nice fiberglass paddle boards that you could take out. They had kayaks you could take out. So it was really a lot of a lot of activities to do on that place. Yeah. They were included with it too. Yeah, you pay a lot, but there's tons to do at the resort. And the nice thing about Hilton Marea was that there were a couple restaurants and things that you could do near the hotel. So, mm -hmm. so you could eat out outside of the hotel if you needed to. Yeah, and we ended up renting a scooter for one of the days we were there just so we could explore Morea a little bit more, um, which was really cool to yeah. see. Yeah, and that made it a little easier to get to some other restaurants. But that being said, when we did rent the scooter, we tried to do a late lunch, which didn't really exist when we were there. I don't know if it was the time of year and it, because it was the low season or if just everywhere closes like this but we tried to eat at like 2 30 and everywhere was closed like yeah. absolutely everywhere was closed so so if you're gonna do a lunch out on the island do it at normal lunchtime like yeah. noon yeah it's just not not very accommodating but it was kind of cool it's kind of island time you know yeah it was it was good to definitely get a vehicle and explore a little bit more of the um the island you can get up on some really cool uh, lookout points and some views it's very mountainous Maria mm -hmm. which I wasn't really expecting but I I thought it was 
gorgeous. Yeah, it was it was really pretty. It had the mountains and it had the beautiful water. I mean, the water that you see in all the photos and stuff. So it it, I was blown away. I definitely definitely recommend Moray if you ever go. Yeah, we we wanted to go out and explore, and I booked the scooter right through the concierge just because of. What am I trying to say? It was a lot easier to do it that way than, than, yeah, the convenience than doing it and going out on my own. I probably could have saved a little bit of money, but I remember they said that a car was going to be for like a, I think it was a half day rental. It wasn't even a full day. It was going to be like $140 or something like that. And the scooter ended up being like 40 US dollars. So that was a lot better. And uh, gas was cheaper in it too. The concierge at the Hilton was great. She, yeah. <laughs> we had so many questions and yeah. concerns and things. That she helped us out. Um, the service at Hilton was really, really good. Really good. Mm -hmm. It was definitely more, I mean, it's a, a big chain resort, so you're going to get a little bit of um, lack of personality in that situation, but we were very, very well taken care of there. Yeah. And um, we definitely recommend it if, if anyone wants to. Mm -hmm. Go to Morea. We I recommend the the um what was the other one? Kaveka too. That yeah, definitely that was had a little cool. bit more Polynesian. And I think we paid a hundred and twenty or a hundred and thirty a night, so that's a little more budget. You can do the Airbnb that's fifty bucks a night, you know. But for this experience, we wanted like the resort, the beautiful overwater bungalow, you know, and that kind of thing. Um, one really cool thing that I wanted to mention at the. Hilton, they had this one restaurant that was actually out on the pontoons where all the overwater bungalows are. Um, so the way that they did that was just a large dock that kind of went out and it branched off on different sides and that's where all the rooms that you had that you could jump right into the ocean. But in the middle of it, they had this crepery, um, which was kind of cool. French Polynesia is obviously French influenced, so there's a lot of French food, a lot of French wine. Well, it's part of France, mm -hmm. so... <laughs> I know, obviously, but but you get like, you know, the island and the kind of Polynesian vibe, but you also get kind of the French side of things too. So they had this crepe restaurant, which was really good. Yeah, it was su super tasty. It, yeah, I mean, it was a little more on the steep side, but it was, it was as far like as crepes go. It was $19 a crepe instead yeah. of like $35 for a hamburger someplace yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the really cool part about it was there were lights on the water underneath and at night for some reason all of these stingrays and sharks were attracted to these lights so you could eat your food and look down and there'd just be sharks and stingrays swimming all below you which was really cool yeah it was a really cool experience yeah that was super neat and one night the night actually not the night we ate there but we went back there another night and it was i bet you we saw probably like 10 sharks, yeah, at, 15 at sharks time. at one time just kind of swimming around. So that was really, yeah. really cool. Yeah. That was cool. One thing about Morea that was a little bit off-putting was there's not a ton of access to beaches. It's not like the yeah. whole island is ringed in beaches. Um, the Hilton had, like, the resort, the big resorts will have them. Um, there is a big public beach that's not too far from the Hilton that I think you can walk to that might take 20, you, you 20 can. Minutes. You can definitely walk to it. Um, and that and that was really nice. But if you're staying on like the other side of the island, um, there's less less beach access than we thought. But mm -hmm. since we were staying at the Hilton, we really didn't have to worry about that. So definitely keep it in mind if you do stay in, in an Airbnb or um, a little budget hotel, you might have to work a little bit harder to get to an actual beach with sand. Yeah. That being said, though, if you wanted to get on a boat, you could get to some really really cool places. Maybe not that super picturesque white sand beach that you were looking for, but some really, really amazing little coves with some super blue water. And we actually went two times to go do that. The second time I think was the favorite, which is when we did this snorkel tour. Yeah, that was really fun. Yeah, so we did a, uh, we booked through Morea Midi Tours, um, which had really great reviews for the whole island. I don't know how much it cost. If you're watching this on YouTube, we will link all this stuff in the description so yeah. you can check them out and any blog posts and other related videos that, mm -hmm. that, that we yeah. have. Yep. As, as we said before, we just got back from this trip, so if you're following us on Instagram or anything, you've definitely seen all these photos yeah. already. Uh, I looked up Moran Media Tours on TripAdvisor, I think, and they had five stars. 
And it was really nice because all their boats were um, limited to like 12 people, I think. So yeah. you weren't stuck in a huge boat with 50 of your closest friends. And there are definitely a lot of tours that do that too. And we've seen those tours and it just wasn't kind of the experience that we wanted um, to be in the water with that many people. So it was a really cool boat. It's actually a uh, had a little pontoon off the side, I think. Is, yeah, it was or like kind an of, outrigger kind of, kind of like thing. an outrigger. Yeah, but with a motor. Um, and They had instruments, and they played Polynesian music while we were Yeah, they had like a, a drum and a ukulele, and we're yeah. kind of cruising around the island a little bit and showing us some different spots. They do some coral restoration, so they showed us that, which was really cool. Um, and just took us around a little before we actually went to the snorkel spot on Morea which is where all of the sharks and stingrays hang out. And when we say we swim with sharks, I should mention that they were small sharks. Um, at least on Morea they were. Next week we'll talk about Bora Bora and some bigger sharks. But um, they're black tip reef sharks. They're very skittish. They're probably the biggest one we saw was like maybe three or four feet. But they're, they're not very wide. They're only like this big around. Yeah. So they're really not that threatening in the water. Um, and like I said, they stay away from you quite a bit. So it was a really cool experience. Um, I was a little nervous about it at first, but as soon as I got in, I was like, oh, this is so awesome. And I was actually trying to get closer to them and get better GoPro pictures and things like that. Yeah. And the sandbar that you're on, um, is really soft and it's about waist deep, maybe a little in between waist to chest deep. So that was cool too. If you weren't a strong swimmer or anything like that, or you got freaked out by a shark, you'd just stand up and kind of walk yeah. back. You know, you weren't really like... The stingrays were probably bigger for the bigger than the sharks, if that gives you an idea. Yeah, the, the stingrays, stingrays were, were, really big. were huge. And they're, um, they're a little more aggressive. Just because the guides feed them. So. Yeah, and, and so they would come right up to you and be like kind of waving on you. And if... I'm sure you've seen some of those pictures on Instagram. Like, <laughs> the, the stingray comes up on your neck. It was and weird. Like, ah! It was cool, but it was weird. Yeah, they I feel kind of funky, definitely. Uh, and they move really weird, too. But they're, I mean, they were probably four feet across. I mean, they were, they were yeah, big. Not in, probably not including their tails. Yeah. Yeah, with the tails. I, know, they're four feet. I mean, they're, 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 huge. they're, they're huge. They're really big. Um, it was cool. And uh, one actually spit on me because they were... I was walking over from one side of the boat to the other side where Kelly was, and one of the guides was feeding it some fish, and they had the mouth kind of underneath, um, so it was like kind of up out of the water, really, really weird to see, and this stingray just kind of went like, and just shot all this water like up in my face, and it was spit on by a stingray, I never thought I'd be able to say that. Bro. <laughs> Yeah, the, the tour was really cool, though, because it also included lunch, and um, they made poisson cru, which is, we haven't talked about that yet. That yeah. is a um, traditional Tahitian fish dish. Ooh, that was hard to say. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like ceviche. With, yeah, it's like Tahitian ceviche. With a lot of coconut milk. Yes, they, it's white tuna, so it's not the normal um, ahi tuna you might be used to mm -hmm. um, in poke and other things, but they put... Um, Citrus juice and coconut milk and raw vegetables, basically. Yep. And it's really mix it all simple. Together, a little yeah. bit of salt and it, yeah, it's super simple. Oh, it was so good. It was really oh, good. Really and I know good. that the, the fish was caught like the day before or that morning. So that was probably part of it too. But they actually got coconuts and they were like picking them up out of the water as we were going to the snorkel spots yeah. and like we collecting like, what them. What the heck are they which doing? We thought we, he was joking around because it was like this big you know, kind of pile of like leaves and kind of nasty stuff that you'd find gathering in the ocean. He just picks out a couple of coconuts and he's like, oh, that's for lunch. Or like, you know, but, but it was really good because if you've yeah. never broken up, open a coconut, the actual coconut itself is really small inside. So you go through, a, several you know, layers. several layers to get to it, but they let us kind of shuck the coconuts and get all the meat out and everything. And then they squeeze it into the coconut milk right in front of us yeah they made it right there it was yeah, it's, true island style and it was it's super, super good it was super cool and also on the buffet they had like coconut bread and other uh, chicken that they made it was yeah. really really good yeah a little bit of island rum 
Yeah, <laughs> rum punch, it's definitely big, pineapple juice. Yes. So. Yeah, it was, it was really fun. So definitely recommend Maria if you, number one, if you want to go a little bit more budget to French Polynesia, um, Bora Bora is the expensive destination. There's not that many ways to save money there, but you definitely can in Maria. You can do it half and half. You can do it ultra luxury or you can do it pretty budget if you really want to. Yeah. And I've, I've received a couple questions too about the more budget ways to do the things. So we, we had quite a few, quite a few things that we did that just saved a lot of money. We brought some of our own meals and stuff. So maybe we'll put out a blog later on kind of, or a video on our full budget and how we kind of broke it down and made it a little more affordable. So I think that'd be kind of interesting to do. So. Definitely, definitely. But uh, yeah, well, thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll be back next week to talk about Bora Bora. Yes, don't miss it. Same bat time, same bat channel, Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That is 1 p.m. Pacific time here in California. So we will see you guys then. Thanks so much for watching. And if you're watching this on YouTube, Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like, and you will never miss a video from us, all right? All right. Bye. Stay safe. Thanks. <laughs>